Senior Cannon on the Hi. Mental Margarita Show. How you feeling? Good. How are you? I'm feeling fantastic, and it's good to have you on the show. Thank you. Well, thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. Now, <laughs> let's start. Let's start right away. You grew up with lots of music in your life. Yeah. As a child. Yes. How was that experience as a child? I mean, was there music everywhere? Yeah, I grew up, uh, my parents loved listening to that old school music, you know, back in the 70s. And that's what I grew up with. Not just like, not just what the 70s groups, but also, you know, different genres, you know, um, Hispanic music, you know, the 70s back then too. It was different types of music back then. So just listening to different types of genres of music throughout my whole life has always been interesting because you're able to go ahead and create, you know, depending on your mood or that beat. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so that's great. How, yeah. So, I mean, you're having the family cookouts, everybody's dancing. It, it just was in your blood. Where are you originally from, if you don't mind me asking? I'm from Mexico, Tijuana. Tijuana, ah. Mexico. <laughs> I can tell you, I I have a memory there. Uh oh. I, oh my gosh, I had the ball. I went there. Yeah. I, had, I had the best time in the world. Then I went to Rosarito. Oh, there you go. And I had some crab legs on the rooftop. They're the best over there. Oh my goodness! It's and so I fun. went with some of my some of my Mexican friends, and let me tell you something. That's the way to go. Because we had a ball. There you go. It's the freshest. That's the freshest seafood you could get. Oh, my gosh. It was so fresh. Uh, and I had a margarita. But now I got a TV show called Mental Margarita. So it's crazy. Is that where you got it from? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe so. So you began modeling. How was that like? So I started mar modeling way back. I could say like in the 1990s. Gosh, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> I started back then when I was younger. And, you know, throughout my life, I, I, I was doing modeling here and there. You know, every once in a while, it's like, well, you know, I got the urge to go ahead and do a photo shoot or someone will contact me. And um, I started doing it back in 2013. I okay. was just that's all I was doing, the modeling, you know, and wow. I was able to get myself in like over 20 magazines online, did a couple of fashion shows, stuff like that. So I was able to get myself out there in the modeling industry. I'm starting to take it a little serious. You meet a producer, you start helping build a studio. Who was the producer? <laughs> and and what did that consist of you building a studio it sounds so mysterious what are you doing so back in what was it when was it like 2016 2017 uh i met a producer i met two producers there um they were called themselves bananas and ham and they just opened up a month before i met them and so they had a little studio. They just start out with, you know, whatever equipment that they had. And, um, you know, when I, I was in trade, what they were doing, you know, they, they brought artists in, they got to record them. And it was just intriguing, you know, get, how getting that product out from the artist to the mic, to recording it, to getting it, mix the master to the final, right? Right. So I, I asked them, you know, why don't you show me? Let me just learn how to record. I just wanted to learn. You know, it, it wasn't no big deal. I just wanted to learn. So they taught me how to record. And I'm like, you know what? Let me try to see if I could get you guys some artists here. I know a couple of people, you know, they might be interested in. And at that time, since they were just barely new, you know, they were giving out a really good deal. Three hours for $25. Wow. Like, that's really cheap. It's like, yes, yeah, like, we just tried to get ourselves out there. It's like, okay, that's fine. So 
I told her again, let me go ahead and try. Um, now that I learned how to record, let me see if I could get some artists in here. And so I was known as one of the female engineers here in Las Vegas. Wow. Clients here. Yes, I was starting to get clients at the studio. Yeah, 2019. And it grew. And now I manage nine artists. I have wow. I have two artists in Cali and then the rest of them are here in Vegas. Wow, that is yeah. fantastic. <laughs> now, how do they reach you? How do how does the artist reach you if they're interested in uh you managing them or hearing something that they have? What's the best way? Um, they could always look me up in social media, all social media platforms. Um, they just had to look up for my name, um, but it's a little hard to spell sometimes, but that's okay. People are starting to notice who I am. Um, I do have, you know, I always post everywhere um, my personal information out there. Like I say, social media, they could contact me there. And is Y E S S E N I A Cannon is the last yeah. name C A N N O N. Yes. And you got Twin Towers Management and yes. is Yesenia, is that correct? Correct. Yes. I want to thank you, Yesenia, for being on this show. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for coming on the Mental Margarita Show. Thank you. And much success to the Twin Tower management. Thank you. Let's shake the world. Yes, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> Let's get it. Dante Muse right. in the building. Welcome yes, to sir. the Mental Margarita Show. How you feeling, man? I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great. How about you? Oh, you know what? I'm feeling wonderful. So let's take it back. So where are you originally from? I'm from Tampa, Florida, originally, actually. Tampa, Florida, born and raised. Uh, okay. I left around 20 years old when I joined the military. Um, joined the Army, did some uh, military intelligence for seven years. So I got to travel wow. a little bit. Yeah, That's amazing. So, you know, I'm originally from Miami. Nice. My wife is from Miramar. Miramar. Okay. Yeah. I know yeah. about Miramar. I used to also live in Miramar for a little bit. Nice. I, st I stayed right off of Miramar Parkway. Okay. I know she was, I don't know all the stuff. I know she, you know, all the, that was her stomping grounds, Pembroke Pines and Pembroke Pines, baby. Broward County, of course. Uh, yeah. So, absolutely. So, you have been doing your thing for, for some while. I mean, but going back to your childhood, I mean, what was some of your inspiration to even want? For, you know, for you to even want to get into the entertainment industry. I was definitely, um, uh, my favorite comedian growing up for a while was Martin Lawrence, of course. I used to do okay. the whole question of, um, you so crazy when he'd be like, baby, I know you was, uh, you were working on Tuesday and Wednesday, but I just <laughs> want to be with my baby. And I would just do that over and over again. My sisters would laugh, whatever. And like, we also had that thing at, in my house where we would like perform for like adults as kids. So we kind of had those moments where we had to get our stuff together and, and work on a routine or whatever and perform wow. for like stuff. And so it was always like in me. And apparently I didn't find out till later, but my mom used to tour as like, she had the alias where she used to sing and tour with groups and stuff. And I didn't know wow. about her maybe a couple of years ago, which was pretty cool. What was the first break where you said, okay, I want to take this for real? Um, honestly, it was it was probably 2013, I guess. I had like a group that I was working with and we we're trying to sing and I was the only one who was really dedicated. And so it made it difficult to kind of do stuff because I still was in the military as well. And um, but we were we were like putting songs together and putting stuff out and it never really hit like I wanted to. But um, I always had the passion for it. I wrote my first song when I was nine and wow. my mom or whatever. And we found it later after she passed away in 2010 from uh, from cancer. Uh, God bless the rest of her soul. Uh, and, uh, but yes, yes. It, it was again acting. I always did it at church. And um, I just was always just had this natural talent. And it's funny because recently I thought back and it's really how I met my wife as well was because I was an actor. And so it's always God has always used it to kind of just put me in places I'm supposed to be in my ability to tell a story through acting and, and music and stuff. I so. that. 
man. So you start doing your thing. You're feeling, you're feeling good about it. You're getting into the acting game. Now, yeah. I also see here you went to Full Sail. Yeah, Tell me I just, about that part of the alumni. I just graduated with my bachelor's. Uh, I walked the stage and everything. It was awesome. Um, it only took like 29 months, and it's great to get a bachelor's that quickly. But the best part about Full Sail for me was getting the equipment. So I have a, a professional camera. I have professional lights. I have a, a MacBook Pro where I do all my editing on Adobe Premiere. And I've been able to shoot full-fledged films with that. I have a full feature that I'm helping a friend with. And I've been shooting several shorts that I've been able to do uh, with this equipment. And that's been the best thing about it. Like, I learned, you know, composition and how certain shots should look. And the yeah. frame, frame stuff, the biggest thing was having my own equipment and being able to start now. Because I was, my issue, uh, when I started full-time acting, for real, for real, was uh, July two, 2021. And it was because my wife was like, hey, you've been doing uh, the military and intelligence stuff for 14 years and you've been supporting the family. She's like, I'm going to go to real estate school and you go ahead and, and chase your dreams. So I started basically officially July 2021. Uh, and I started on a, uh, as a background actor on the set of Black Panther, the second one, Wakanda Forever. So I'm what? in there, possibly, I got to look and see if I see myself. Come on, baby. I mean, Wakanda Forever. Which you know, I kind of got the jacket. I'm in uh several different shows on uh Disney, uh the new movie Till that they have on there. I see myself in there. I'm a background actor in there, and um the background is cool, but my goal is to be you know in front of the camera having lines. And so I thought you know, not even thought I'm working towards putting out content to where I can feature myself as that main character, the characters I want to play, and I have friends and groups of people who actually want to live their dreams as well. And so I'm putting them in front of the camera. I'm getting a lot of really good reviews on the stuff I'm doing. And let's talk about it. I mean, you got Cold Word, Gracias. You got TSA. Yeah. You got Just As. You got Zombie is the New Black. Yes. Yeah, let That's me talk about Zombie is the New Black. black. Zombie is the New Black. has uh, It's gotten over 600 views in nine days now. Wow. On YouTube. All these are on YouTube on my page, uh, two more productions. Uh, and... Zombie is the New Black is, is really good because it's one of those things. It's really hitting at a great time, too. But it's one of those things where I pretty much, if you watch it, there's this reporter in there. And she talks about how these zombies are mistreated and they don't have the same things that that Whoa. we offer to whoever and that they need help and support and programs. And what I'm really writing is that this is what Black people need. Exactly what it is. And that's why the, the, the trick is to kind of say, oh, they're, so they're, they're basically like taking up for the zombies. But it's essentially what we've always needed to kind of progress beyond where we are. Like the reason we have violence in different locations and stuff is because of poverty. We all know that poverty is the reason for most violent crimes, most anything. It's because somebody is lacking. It's not because they're terrible people. It's because they're lacking something. So if you had a legislation or a program to, to set these people up for success to where they don't have to do something illegal to get what they need, a lot of crimes wouldn't exist. Everybody's not out here being evil. You know what I mean? They just have needs that society hasn't helped them meet or whatever. And so she kind of vouches for how these zombie people need this. And then some funny stuff happened or whatever. And people, people are loving it. Like people are like, man, how did you think of that? And um, I tell people when I write, I pretty much just daydream. It's professional quality. It's industry standard to where people look at it and they're like, man, that quality is good. Quality is good. So. Well, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, you definitely garnered our attention here at Mental Margarita. And, uh, you know, I want to also say this. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, most definitely. Thank you for your service. How do they follow you to keep going okay. on with all these projects you got going on? Because you, you got four more productions now. Yeah, you can find me at uh, two or more productions. And you'll see the symbol uh, in, the, in any of the, the YouTube videos. But uh, my personal stuff, you can follow me on Instagram at Dante, D-O-N-T-E, an additional E for my middle name, Eugene. And then my last name, Muse, M-U-S-E. And that's my real name, man. So it's a blessing. So Dante E. Muse, you can find that on Facebook, uh, Instagram, TikTok, uh, all of that stuff. You can find Dante E. Muse everywhere. Well, Dante E. Muse, I want to thank you so much for being on the Mental Margarita Show. You've been an absolute pleasure and a breath of fresh air. And I, I, I'm really 
I am cheering you on, man, because I, I think that you are just going upward. So uh, thank you so thank much for being on the show. Oh, yeah. And remember, um, I had that graduation song, too. So let me know when. when I got um, it. Up. But thank you for having me, Sly Cat. Hey, God bless you, my brother. God bless you. Let's All take right. care. Yeah, bye. Yeah, heck so yeah. welcome to welcome to the mental margarita show. I got Michael Gaxiolo. Okay, this is a professional boxer here, guys. He started his boxing career in 2014. He's had 40 pro boxing matches. Yes. Sir. What was like? What was that like? Man. Well, I originally started boxing at the age of 17. You know what I mean, I okay. was boxing for a month because I couldn't really afford gym dues. And then I was really stuck in to other things too, you know. So uh when I turned 19, I went back. Like uh my dad kind of came back into my life when I turned 19. And then I moved, uh, I went to stay with him in Sacramento for like a month, did some work out there. I was working with him, and then he took me to some boxing gym, and then uh I was there for like two weeks, right? Cause and then when I went back to uh Modesto. I went on my bike to the gym that I used to go to. I was like, what's up? You remember me? He was like, yeah. I was like, put me against your best fighter to watch me work. And then uh, he put me in there as some kid, and then I did my thing. And then I just went to pro. A year, one year later, I went pro. So I turned pro at 20. Wow. And then, you know what I mean? I got 40 pro fights. Eight years later, I got 40 pro fights. I had seven amateur fights. Yeah. Wow. That's, what I do. That's crazy. That's what I do, and, and what what's your little what's your little man's uh name? What's his name? His, his name's Theodore. Theodore Rain G Gaxiola, T R G. Uh oh, Theodore's gonna be a little <laughs> fighter too, <laughs> man. Yeah. So what's I, up, Theo? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's chilling. What's <laughs> happening? It's <laughs> <Hey, son. laughs> So that that alone is uh an accomplishment of itself. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you have to possess to be a professional fighter? You must have the will, the heart, you know what I mean, the dedication, the, the never give up attitude. You know what I mean? You gotta have you gotta have integrity. You gotta be a good hearted person to be a good fighter. You know what I mean? Wow, that's that's deep. Fighter. Yeah, you gotta be a good hard person to be a good to be a good fighter. I mean, yeah. That's wow, that's crazy, man. You know, I, I I haven't heard too many people say that, and I think that that is that is true. Yeah, yeah. That you know, you have your right values in line in life. You know, what I'm saying it's gonna make you more disciplined. Yeah, yeah. And all that good is all yeah, that good stuff. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah, yeah, sir. Yes, so you, uh, let me let me see this now. You fought on Golden Boy card yeah, as well yeah. as top rank. Yeah. How amazing were those experiences, my brother? Uh, yeah, they they were great. They were great. And I mean, I got the top. Uh, uh I fought on a couple top rank cards, a few uh Golden Boy cards, and I fought on a few uh PVC cards as well. Wow. Uh, yeah, but uh. Yeah, they were they were nice. They were good. Uh, a lot of robberies. Those are all like years back though. I would say about five six years ago when I fought on them. A lot of those. Cars. You, you said a lot of robberies. Oh uh, yeah, a lot of robberies. Yeah, yeah. Boxing, <laughs> politics. A lot of politics, you know, huh? Get it twisted. Perception is everything. You know what I mean? I, I'm forty and I'm undefeated, right? Forty and zero. Perception is everything. And the way we look at life is everything. I was sparring Devin Haney, right? The first time I ever sparred Devin Haney. He was, Devin like, Haney. He was, 16, he was 16 years old. Right. I was 21 or whatever, 22 at the time. And I was 2-0 and as a pro, right? And he was about to, about to go pro. He was still amateur. And, um, man, if you watch that sparring session on YouTube, they'll say, oh, look, he's still green. And two and all as a pro, still green, you know. Like I came yeah. a long way, but yeah, I remember my time in Vegas. I learned a lot. Mike McKellen, the body snatcher. He, you know what I mean? He he's there. Show me how to hit the punch back correctly. <laughs> been, around, been around a lot of legends. 
Mm-hmm. Well, that's good, man. And you know what? Be- being that you've been around a lot of legends, I can tell that they rubbed off of you very well. You yeah, got a lot yeah. of great qualities. And I'm really excited about um, your your future fights that are coming up. Now, is there any boxer that really inspired you the most? Um, let me see. I like I like a boxer with charisma. So I like you know I like like Roy Jones, Prince Nassim Hamed, Johnny Tapia. Uh, yeah, fighters like that you know with 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 character, you know what I mean? And, right. Uh, yeah, so they they got some for that. Leonard, you know what I mean? Like Sugar Ray Leonard, he was always always like my number one, my my favorite fighter. You know what I mean? Oh, come on now, me, Sugar Ray, baby. If you watch me fight, you see a glimpse of everything. You know what I mean? I got okay. a quote. I got a quote to say. Uh, they they say you can't uh to don't jump a boxer, but they never say anything about flying. And I mean, you see, uh, you see, Roy Jones and Princess seem living their feet all the time. <laughs> yeah, no, man, they be flying. They be yeah. flying for real, baby. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Hey, that's that's bad. So, for the audience, for people that want to start following you, rallying behind you, how how do they find you? Uh, they can follow me. Uh, my my Facebook is just my name, Michael Gaxiola. And then my Instagram is uh, Smooth Boxing Two Hundred Nine with the V S M O O V E Boxing Two Hundred Nine. And also, uh, right here, I'm a di- I'm an owner of this uh, boxing company, Reich Reich Fighting Reich. Gear. Right here, yeah. If you guys ever oh. want to get some gear, you know, you know where it's at. Right there. Oh, oh, it's called Reich. <laughs> yeah, Reich Reich Fighting Gear, right here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm wow, a distribu- wow. distributor of it right here in Northern California area. Well, all the United States area right here. So, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Right. I got to get me a right shirt, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> when we link up, yeah. I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to shoot you. All right, cool. Sure. Yeah. Hey, listen, man. It, it, it's our pleasure, man. Thank you for being on the Mental Margarita Show. You've Thank been you. awesome. And uh, Appreciate let's shake you, the world, man. man. I want you to keep winning, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, like I said, perception is everything. Look at life. The way we look at life, we should look at life with love because if we hate, then they winning. We can't let them win, man. So shout out. That's shout real. out to you. Thank you for having me. Hey, God <laughs> bless you, man. And God bless little Theodore, too. Hey, yeah, yeah. Thank you, bro. Like, hey, say bye, son. <laughs> thank you, though, man. Like, bye, bye, Theodore. <laughs> All right, yeah. Theodore's All right. ready to go. Take yeah, care, yeah. my brother. I appreciate it, yeah. Bye-bye. Yo, what's up, world? Thank you for tuning in to the Mental Margarita Show. I am the Rebel, and this is my rant. Why are there so many shootings in America? It's so crazy to think that at any given moment, someone could come and open fire in a crowded place. And I don't even understand why people do this. I hope that the authorities can figure out a way to stop it without creating more violence, but that is still yet to be determined. I mean, do you know how many shootings there has been in America recently? In 2023 alone, this last one marks 130th in the nation, making it 89th in shootings on school grounds. I feel like I can't even go out in public anymore without being on edge or constantly looking over my shoulder. I mean, what would you do if you found yourself in the middle of one of these tragedies? I mean, better yet, what I really want to know is when will the violence end? I'm so worried about the increase of shootings in America that we must do something to prevent these catastrophic events and protect innocent lives from dying now. We need to come together and find a meaningful solution to ensure the safety of our loved ones and our communities. So the question is, what do we do? Do we ban every weapon in America? Or do we give every adult a weapon 
and allow them to defend themselves and teach them the morals of protection. I don't know. What I do know, be aware of self, be aware of mind, and be aware of others. Thank you, and carpe diem. Every two seconds, someone in the United States needs blood. It is essential for surgeries, cancer treatment, chronic illnesses, and traumatic injuries. Hi everyone, it's Jersey Doll, inviting you to participate in the next Red Cross Blood Drive on Saturday, May 6th, in honor of Luke, a seven-year-old boy suffering from non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Luke is still undergoing treatment with the help of multiple blood transfusions. His life was changed because someone took the time to donate blood. Scan the QR code on your screen now to find out how you can help save lives. Or visit www.redcrossblood.org. Champagne glass and your cigars up. Uh. See the guys with mob ties drive the cars up. Uh. Bright lights, most nights they buy the bars up. Uh. Candy coated Chevy cars on the highway. It's Frankie Baby, it's on, and this is my way. Dean Martin at the Sands this Friday. With Sammy Davis, here's a little hint where I stay. City shines like Liberace's mansion, and you know Elvis had the whole city dancing. Show girl silhouette steady prancing. Shout out to June, just the Copa girls anthem. Legal gambling, yeah, that would tempt me. It's in city, holy water couldn't cleanse me. And Wayne Newton had the crowd in a frenzy. Live at the Stardust, the seats never empty. In Las Vegas, and it counted three. I want to hear you scream, Viva Las Vegas. Ready? One, two.